Today's video is one of the drop-in replacements we carry at Chadwell Supply, which is going to be the MO99. We have a, a, a lot of the market that has gone and chosen to go with MO99. It has some advantages and some disadvantages. Uh, <coughs> the advantage to MO99, as pitched by DuPont, is it is one of the more efficient refrigerants that are considered a drop-in. And again, to clarify drop-in, drop-in means to remove the old refrigerant, run a vacuum on a system, change the dryer, and put a new refrigerant in. It doesn't mean drop it in on top of the existing refrigerant that's in the system, like mixing MO99 with R22. No mixing of any refrigerant shall occur at any point, so do not mix refrigerants. MO99 is a five-part mixture. And like the 407C that we discussed in previous video, is only a three-part mixture. Um, it has a lot of the same components as 407C, but it has two extra components in it, and it's your isobutanes and isopropanes. Those are your R600s. Those are basically your propane tank gas, but in small percentages. And it's such a small percentage that when mixed in here with this refrigerant, if I open this up and put a torch or a flame in front of it, it's not going to flame up. But it is possible to fractionate the refrigerant to the lowest pressure portion of the blend so that it becomes flammable at some point. What does that mean when I say it fractionates to the lowest pressure portion of the blend? It means if you get a leak in a system and the leak leaked out portions of the refrigerant over a period of time. And you did, it went undetected, so it got really low. You put your gauges on it, and it's reading 10 or 15 PSI. If, at that point, I tried to open that system with an ignition source, and it clearly says it on their website, if a flame does occur and comes in contact with an ignition source, and you cannot extinguish the flame, then vacate the premises. Do not attempt to turn off the gas. So it is possible, but it would be a very rare occurrence for that to even happen. So just understand that it could happen, but it would be very hard for you to create that scenario where it will happen. MO99 is a five-part mixture, and it has a fractionation value. It's not as high as 407C as we mentioned before with 407C, but it's still there. But the thing that they pitch is it does not require an oil change. In our previous video, we talked about changing the oil. This one is you remove the old refrigerant out, run a vacuum, change the valve stems, and put the new refrigerant in, and expect it to work. All of this holds true because of the hydrocarbon R600 they put in the refrigerant helps with that oil return. But all of them would perform much better for you if you did do a complete oil change. So if I was able to put in a new compressor, it already has the PoE oil in it, it's going to perform quite well. When I go to introduce the new refrigerant in, same as the 407C, I'm going to invert the job. And on the bottom of the chart, we have our dew point and bubble point charging chart on the bottom of the box. And we're looking for that 40 degree evaporator. <clears throat> but we measured the charge we took out, and we have the factory data charge on the plate. We're going to look at the data charge on the plate, and this one is the 5 pounds, 5 ounces, or 85 ounces of refrigerant. So I'm going to put about 90% of that back in with MO99. Once I put that 90% in, I now need to adjust the chart using dew point or bubble point. I'm still using superheat, but I'm using, when I say dew point or bubble point, I'm using the dew point values telling me that the refrigerant has gone to a 100% vapor at that point. We are all looking for a 40 degree evaporator, no matter which one of these refrigerants. And 40 degree evaporator in a dew point scenario for MO99 is 62 pressure. So unlike 68 with R22, we're looking for 62. It's gonna be a little bit lower on your gauge that you're reading. Then I'm gonna measure the temperature on the suction side based on the outdoor and indoor temperatures using your wet bulb and dry bulb thermometers, you can adjust the charge and add refrigerant. As previously discussed, anytime we add refrigerant to the system, we want to weigh it in as a liquid, and we can do it 
just on the high side of the system, no need for the InstaCharger on the high side. But when we adjust the charge while it's running and we have to introduce the refrigerant in as a liquid, because if we didn't, we did it as a vapor, the portion of the blend with the highest vapor pressure would contaminate or give us an improper mixture and we would drop further drop in capacity efficiency. So we invert the job, use the InstaCharger, the refrigerant comes out as a liquid and the InstaCharger changes it back from a liquid to a vapor. Again, with proper training in the technicians, you should be able to make this a fit. The biggest drawback I see is that when using this refrigerant is if you have a leak in an older system that you've been using MO99 in and you go back to top it off, the tendency is, hey, let me just top it off, I'm busy, I'll come back to it later. But what leaked out of the systems? Portions of the blend leak out at faster rates than other portions in the blend. So the refrigerant has fractionated to somewhat of a value that it's no longer really a precise mixture of MO99. So you top it off, and what's going to happen is you're going to drop a little bit in capacity and efficiency. And if you continue to keep going back every month or every two months and topping this off, capacity and efficiency is going to drop even further. And at some point, when you've gone back so many times, you have such a bad mixture that it's not even cooling or working at all. And at that point, you want to blame the refrigerant when it's really all you have to do is recover that into a leftover a jug all of its own, not to be mixed with any other refrigerant, and recharge as a virgin part of the blend once you find and you fix and you repair the leak. Those are the top points and the pros and cons of MO99. On the next videos, we'll compare the other blended refrigerants uh, going farther. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.